Very good morning, or rather, as a lot of people have started saying, happy morning. I wish every morning can be happy. And if you want every morning to be happy, what do we need? We need people to be nice to us. If you are surrounded by people who are very loving, caring, harmonious, who understand you, who support you, life will definitely be happy. Every morning will be happy. But in real life, what happens? There is somebody or the other creating problems. Somebody is upset with you. Somebody does gossiping behind your back. Somebody cheats you. Somebody gets into arguments with uh, you. And that is part of daily life. Whether we like it or not, we are going to have differences with uh, uh, people every now and uh, uh, then. We have to accept that we have to take stresses of life with least distress. And to be able to do that, we have to learn how to manage differences, arguments, conflicts, which, as I said, are part of life. Okay. Good morning to all of you who have said good morning. Now, when, um, uh, you know, the World Health Organization started their research in the 80s and 90s to find out what are the primary life skills needed to lead a good life. They finally brought out that list of 10. I won't repeat that because most of you are aware of it. So when World Health Organization brought out its list of 10 life skills, which are essential for the well-being and harmony and happiness of uh, uh, people, one of them was conflict handling. So you understand that they gave so much significance to this thing that conflict handling is an essential part of life. And that is why I'm quoting that because what I'm saying is that, uh, you know, this is not something which I have thought out or I am trying to give emphasis to. Even a world body like WHO has said that this is a basic skill and being able to handle conflict effectively. Okay. Let me also start with one uh, very basic uh, uh, thing that is that conflict is inevitable. That's what I was telling you just now, right? There cannot be a world without conflict. Visualize a situation where there is no conflict. You know where that uh, happens. Let's say you are the boss in a particular place and you are so uh, domineering that nobody wants to take panga with you. Nobody wants to argue. Nobody wants to disagree with uh, you. So whatever you say, they will follow. You ask them to bend down and they will crawl because they know which bread is buttered and say, let us apply. Now what happens is they don't work for the well-being of the organization. They work only to get your approval so that they are comfortable and they are not shouted at or fired at or thrown out. But what does it do to the organization and to the team? You can well visualize, right? History has recorded whenever kings, leaders, presidents, when they became so autocratic that nobody was willing to you know, argue with them or to correct them or to put in their viewpoints, and the whole structure collapsed. Be it a family, be it a business organization, be it a huge corporate office or a learning institution, be it a society, a state, a country, where there is no conflict, it is an indicator that one person has totally dominated and no person can be so perfect that he or she can lead the entire team through to success. When we talk about matrimony, for example, I always encourage and I feel nice if a couple comes and says that we are having a lot of arguments. As long as the arguments are on issues and not on persons. If that is the only precaution you need to take, and if you take that precaution, you can go ahead and argue. In fact, I would recommend that you go ahead and argue because 
It is only when you argue, you come to a consensus, you come to an understanding, and you can lead a better quality of uh, life uh, you know, uh, together. On the other hand, you would also have come across couples who don't fight. No arguments take place. Why do you think that uh, happens? Is it possible that they are in harmony of 100% of the issues that they have to face? A close relationship like marriage or any such close relationship. That can only happen if one person has decided to dominate completely and the other person has given up on the relationship. Has decided let him or her decide what to do. Enough is enough. I know nothing will come out of it. I will not be able to win an argument. This person is so unreasonable. Let me just tolerate and pull on with life. And when a person tolerates, it can never lead to anything good. There is a very crucial difference between tolerance and acceptance. In certain close relationships, you have to accept the habit or attitude or behavior of the other person, even though you may not agree with it. In certain other issues, it is very difficult to accept. You say, no, this goes against my basic principles, values, attitudes. I cannot accept it. But when you know that argument is not going to lead to anything other than more and more unpleasantness, what do you do? You tolerate. Toleration is not a way to resolve conflict. Okay, let us see why do conflicts take place at all? Why is it that, uh, you know, when two human beings get together or 20 human beings or 2 lakh human beings or 2 crore human beings, when they get together, why is it that inevitably there is conflict? It could be because of unmet needs or wants. I want something from the other person or I need something from the other person and I am not getting it. Similarly, it could be that my expectations are very high and they are unfulfilled by the other person, for whatever may be the reason. It could be a simple thing like difference in perceptions. I come across, for example, you know, families where the husband and wife have different opinions on how to bring up a child. One may be very strict, one may be lax, one may be focusing only on academics, the other may be wanting to have a holistic uh, approach. One may be thinking that you know entertainment is good, the other may be saying no entertainment spoils a uh, child. So what is happening? Neither of them are enemies of their child, neither of them want to get into conflict. They may be loving each other also, but there's a difference in perception. So I feel as a parent that this is what is right and this is my child. I'm very concerned. This is not somebody here and there. I, this is somebody very important to me, my child, in some cases, even my one and only child. So when I perceive it in certain way, I'm very vehement that I want it this way. The other parent perceives the same thing differently. This perception is such an important factor in differences, arguments, conflict. People look at things only from their own point of view. I have seen a very uh, you know, humorous but a thought-provoking short uh, uh, clip. There is a warehouse where material has to be transferred. Huge stacks of crates are there and they have to be moved in and out all the time. And they have these mini trucks, you know, those battery operated trucks where you pile up the uh, things in front of you and that fellow drives it and puts it in the lorry or takes it off. Now, to save time, what these operators would do is pile up the crates higher than what they should, with the result that their visibility gets affected. They have to keep looking this way and this way to see where they are going. But by adding those extra crates, they think that they can save time and effort. One day, two such fellows were shifting crates and they came and crashed. Lots of crates fell down. There was so much of damage. Thankfully, nothing happened to either of them, but there was a lot of damage to goods. The manager came very angry and he wanted to find out whose fault it is, whom to punish. Now, there was a store's assistant who was sitting in that corner. 
and he had a very clear eye view of these two people where they came from and how that accident took place so the manager went straight up to him and said you saw what happened and uh, i want your statement yes sir definitely i will give you sir i am also very concerned about it i feel that this should not be uh, done and these people are becoming very reckless and i will tell you exactly and sir i want you to understand the way they are behaving one of these days they will kill her kill her what do you mean kill her and anyway there is no lady working in that whole uh, store or organization kill her what are you talking about Yes, sir. They are so reckless; they don't even realize it. One of these days, I'm really scared that they will kill her. After a lot of interrogation, it turned out that that fellow was an animal lover, and there is a stray cat which keeps moving around in the warehouse. And since these people's visibility is not good and they can't properly see where they are going, a little cat comes in between. They would crush her. So his concern is not about that. Lakhs of rupees worth of material which got destroyed. His concern was that these people can someday kill or cause damage to that cat. I'm just giving you that as a real life example to show you how our priorities are done. Okay. Uh, Rina has asked, "How do you resolve conflict in a job or at home?" I'm going to come to the resolving part of it a little later. I'll just run you through the causes of it. ineffective communication plays a very important role in uh, uh, why conflicts take place people just do not convey properly and then they expect results and then it doesn't uh, come difference in values plays a very important uh, uh, role when you have take up that moralistic stand you know that what i am saying is correct what the other person is doing is a sin or it is a crime or those type of uh, uh, things can lead to a lot of arguments cultural differences biases and of course ego those are the main reasons why conflict takes uh, uh, place the other thing so i want you to understand is very interesting that the more you uh, you know spend time in a conflict ridden environment the more short tempered you get and the more likelihood of you are getting into arguments there was a very interesting research done by somebody in the good old days you remember there used to be this big theaters and in the basement they used to have a huge parking for cars and two wheelers so if you want to see the movie you go into the basement park your vehicle and go up and watch the movie now when the movie gets over and you come down and if you are, had come in a little early what happens is your your vehicle is deep inside till the other people remove their vehicle you can't so you have to be a little patient till one by one day remove their vehicles a very interesting survey showed that if the if it was a comedy movie or a romantic movie and they have come down and the vehicles are taking little time to go these people sit waiting patiently or at the most one or time blow a horn or say baba please uh, move i have to go or something if it was a violent movie adventure violence shooting or that when they come down and the other person takes 30 seconds more to move his car this fellow is going bam 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 hey you bloody fellow go out just by a movie but it's a very clear and a very good indicator to show us how the environment plays a very important role and the most important uh, thing is to understand how and with whom the conflict comes so i will request sunita to just show you quickly how and with whom conflict comes list out persons with whom you have conflict situation sometimes we say are i don't even want to think about it every second day i have an argument with that fellow i don't want to think about it no please when you are calm when you are away from the environment please sit and think i seem to be getting into arguments with x y z very often so you make a list of the people with whom you have conflict situations and then try and see why that has happened 
Now, one very simple technique of looking inward rather than outward. You see, what happens is whenever a conflict takes place, my focus is on the other person. Why did this person say that? Why this one always behave like this? Why somebody does that? For that, I have a very simple exercise, which Sunita will show you right now. When you feel the relationship is just not working out. So you made this list of people with whom you have conflict uh, on a regular basis. So what you do is when you feel that I have listed out A, B, C, D, four people. So for A, I will take a sheet of paper and I will draw a vertical line at the center. So now this paper has got the left side and the right side. Then on the left side, write a list of your partner's offenses. What that person does, he is rude, he uses bad language, he is never punctual, he you know, insults me in front of others, whatever may be the point, one, two, three, four, write it down. Simple things, uh, as even added, he puts wet towels on the uh, bed. Like that you list out, right? But along with that, on the right side, write down how I react to it. So when he puts a wet towel on the bed, I throw the wet towel on his head and scream. This is how I react because I'm fed up of reminding him all the time. I, I'll always give that justification, right? He doesn't do any work around the house. He doesn't contribute to anything. It's like he is some being guest living over here. But how do I react to it? I have a fight and I broke things around the house. I smashed things and I you know, scowled and I did this and that. But then I'm doing it because he just doesn't understand. It's not my fault that I'm doing it. That's how I keep justifying. He didn't even remember my birthday. So I gave him a silent treatment for the whole week. One whole week, I just didn't talk to him. In fact, he was amazed why that is happening to me. And then he remembered that it was because he forgot my birthday. So like this, you have this list, right? Left side. This is of the side. How I reacted to it. Then take a scissor and cut the paper down in the middle. Remove the left side and put it away. What is the offense of the other person? Remove it from your eyesight. And then look at the thing that is remaining with you. How I react. See how it reads now. I throw a towel on his head and scream. I have a fight and I broke things around the house. I gave him silent treatment the whole week. I made him sleep outside in the cold. I scream and make a scene. Now who turns out to become the monster? Me. <coughs> Simple thing. You have to face it. Face your own issues. Face. And that's why I said if you really want to resolve conflict, constructively you have to look inward rather than looking at the other uh, person behavioral scientists tell us that uh, when we are faced with a conflict situation we uh, you know uh, sort of uh, uh, take up one of these uh, stands one is you know to avoid run away from the no, but I don't want to get it. I, I don't want to get into arguments. I don't want to even be present over here. Doesn't matter even if I lose something, I will just walk off from here. The other is accommodating. Let the other person have his way. Okay, I will oblige him. If he feels it is so important, if he's getting so upset about it, so be it. I'd rather that I allow him to have his uh, uh, way. The third is competing. I will not allow him to have his way. What does he think of himself? I will put in my views. I will do the way things I want to do. The fourth one is compromising. You do half, I do half. You take this much, I take this much. And many people think that's a good way of <clears throat> resolving conflict. No, it is not. Because a compromise always leads to both people feeling unhappy. If I want to have a full meal and the other person also wants to have a full meal and there's only one meal available, if we compromise and break it into half, I will say, I'm 
a chapati lover, at least I wanted to have two chapatis. I got only one. What's the point in getting the rice? I'm not so fond of rice. You get my point? Both people in a compromise are left dissatisfied. So there is a fifth one, which is what I want you to emphasize on. That is collaborating. What in management jargon they uh, talk of as win-win situations. If we can work towards that. And before I show you what are the ways and means to develop uh, this, which will answer some of your uh, questions, like Kanupriya said, when we try to be practical, but the person we are confronting is irrational, what should we uh, do? Satyan has agreed that humor and lightening the mood certainly leads to lower conflicts and all that. Yeah, Kirti has uh, um, said that we don't actually get a chance to convey. All these are very genuine doubts which have been raised up. So I want you to understand one thing. Whenever, in, uh, again, in management uh, jargon and in management training, uh, we talk about four things. This was uh, you know, told to me by my guru of management, the late Sharu Rangnekar. He put down this uh, you know, teamwork at four steps. The first one is forming. You form a team. Sometimes you have the privilege of selecting your team. Sometimes you have to become part of a team which has been selected by somebody. So that's your first step. Now team has been formed. You are told that you are part of this team. This person will look after finance. That person will look after marketing. This person will be the boss of the team. In his absence, he will be the second person in charge. All that formation has been done. The moment that is done, storming starts, he says, storms. Why should I have this? Why should I go to him even to get sanctioned for small amounts of money? Why should he have a bigger table and I have a smaller uh, table? Why should uh, X report to him and why not to uh, me? I am the senior person. This is how the storm takes place. Good management gurus actually recommend that the earlier and the greater the storming takes place, it is better for the team because only when storming takes place, then norming comes into play. Norms, setting norms, rules, regulations, precedents. Last time when it happened, how did you deal with it? This time, how are you going to deal with it? And once the norms are laid down, the norming is done, then good performance starts. So in one sentence, he put it, Farming, storming, norming, and performing. Now, how do we reach to that? I have made it out in very simple points. I'm going to show it to you right now. Keep it in mind, follow it up, and see how well you can practice or follow them. Start first with. Be sure of what you are talking, the facts. Many times people who get angry forget what they are talking about. Haven't you come across people arguing loudly somewhere? And at one point, this person starts saying, who do you think you are? Huh? The other person says, what, what do you think you are? No, no, I, I'm asking, what do you mean? What do you think you are? What do you, you think you are great? Now, whatever that person thinks of what he is or who he is, does it make a difference to the issue? So that happens when you're not sure about what you're talking. You've just allowed your emotions to get control over you. You've lost your temper and you are somehow by hook or crook trying to dominate over the other person. Next. Know what you want when you start arguing. What is it that I want? Do I only want to put him down? Do I only want to prove a point? Or do I want to be said that, no, this work is not mine. This should be allotted to somebody. Or no, I cannot tolerate bad language. So I want to make sure that when we are sitting down to talk, bad language should not be used. So be clear about what you uh, want. If possible, list it down. Write it on a paper or in your notepad on your phone and keep it ready in front of you. And when you start to have the dialogue, discussion, argument, conflict, whatever it is, Keep going back to that point. I get very upset when abusive language is used. 
I feel that this extra load is being put on me and the other person is not participating and sharing the workload. These things should be very clear. Next, tell clearly what you feel and what you want. So I know what I want, but in a fit of anger, I start digressing. I start saying, no, no, you never do this. Even last year when this happened, no, that is not relevant. I want this and this is what I feel. I feel very upset when you, somebody uses bad language. So I feel we should lay down certain norms that bad language should not be used in these meetings or at home, whatever. Next, then listen to what the other person has to say. Please give a gap. Don't go on talking. The more you talk nonstop, just trying to dominate over the other person, the more the other person gets frustrated. Listen to the other person and have an open mind. Have an open mind when listening to the other person as long as you are listening. Think for some time what the other person has uh, um, uh, said. Relax, jot down mentally or physically, write down, oh, this is what his expectation is. This is what is making him angry. This is what is putting him out. Clarify doubts. You mentioned that in this, 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 this is what happens. I'm not very clear about uh, this. Can you explain? Now, by clarifying doubts, not only you are getting your doubts clarified, you are also helping him to introspect. Remember that. And he tends to become a little more calmer and a little more logical. And then state your opinion after all that has been done. I agree to this. I do not agree to uh, that. I still feel very bad about this, this, this. I feel that I'm not getting justice in this. Your opinion and then discuss with the other person and make an effort to reach a joint solution. Try it out, no harm. Stop for a moment and say, yes, I know we are both very angry right now, but can we please do this, this, this? Can we try to see, can we resolve it? Calm down and try it out. Accept your mistakes when they are pointed out. Sometimes small things when they point out, we get very angry. What do you mean by saying that? Well, somewhere deep down, you know that, yeah, I have made that mistake. I raised my voice first, or I did this, or I neglected that. Yes, as far as that is concerned, I'm accepting my mistake. I should not have raised my voice, or I should not have ignored you at that particular time. Try not to lose your temper at any point. The greatest gurus and masters have said, in a war, in an argument, the person who loses the temper has lost the battle. Do whatever means to bring down your stress levels. Do deep breathing, drink a glass of water, go out and get some fresh air, but try to maintain control over your anger. Limit the arguments to present situation. You remember five years back when your mother had come and how she was saying this and you didn't support me. What can be done? This is not a movie that we can rewind and replay and edit and remove. What has happened has happened. Limit your arguments to the present situation and most important, do not criticize the person, criticize the issue. And lastly, please remember, don't get into arguments when you cannot convince, when you know the other person is stuck on certain things which he will not change. Look for other ways and means to resolve whatever uncertainties or leftovers that you have. Sitting down and trying to argue with the person, trying to convince the person can only make matters worse. So these are some of the very simple but highly effective things which I wanted to tell you. Based on this, we will have an open house as usual. We'll have a discussion. I've already got quite a few you know, inputs into the uh, chat box, which we will take up one by one. But as they say in the TV serials, break ke ba. Hey, hi. So, uh, Seema, uh, you've been seeing me and another colleague of mine, Meera. And, um, you know, one more thing uh, uh, 
to add to Ali's list is if you want to chill, relax, please come to Banjara. <laughs> I think you can come here, discuss anything that you want to discuss, even come and just come and have a cup of tea with us and enjoy. <laughs> That's one feedback we usually get when people come and visit us that it seems like a very cheerful, lively place. So if you're in Bangalore, please come. And I would also like to tell you that this time for our DCS program, it's so heartwarming that people from outside Bangalore are coming and uh, doing this program. And, uh, you know, they're looking for a place to stay here near Banjara. We have somebody coming from Chennai, Coimbatore, Hyderabad. So it's so nice, so much hustle bustle, uh, you know, and excitement of starting our DCS program, which we do once a year. So that is something, any, any details, of course, like I have been telling you, DCS is about working on yourself as well as reaching out to others, even in a professional way. And when you come here, the best part is when, you know, we say, okay, this one, she's done it in 1999 was the first batch of BCS. So she passed out in, uh, you know, uh, 2000, this one passed out in 2005, Veera has done it in this year, Sunita has done it in this year. So it's, it's so nice because all of us, I think that's our common uh, ground. That is where we all, you know, think uh, uh, similarly. So if you want to also, uh, learn this skill of counseling or just to work on yourself please come here and uh, come for the chat right and uh, i want uh, uh, meera also to tell you about another fantastic program which we are planning for children so meera what do we yes. have so we have the youngs program coming up on the 17th of august it's every tuesdays and thursdays from 4 to 5 30 it is a, a very nice uh, life skills program for children Actually, what is happening is that we feel that the children are at the most, uh, you know, uh, they are the ones who are having that back leash and they are the ones who have not been able to, you know, live their life to the fullest right now. Because so we are having the life skills program for them. We do it through activities. We do it through role plays. We do it through storytelling. And we also have this wonderful concept where we put them into groups. We ask them to brainstorm. We ask them to debate. And we also have a core, uh, you know, agenda to it. And this year, the core agenda is that we are doing it for social skills and behavior. We are also talking about social media. So, you know, it's going to be amazing. So that is our Young's program, Life Skills for Children. And yes, it's starting on the 17th of August. So we are looking forward to it. We are all geared up here. Our entire team has been preparing. So yes, we are all ready for y'all. Right. And as you can see, the enthusiastic uh, Meera, she's done a fantastic job. One just got over and we got a phenomenal, uh, uh, you know, children really enjoyed the program. So Meera and her team will take you through that. So with that, back to Ali. Thank you. So, Mira was saying children, children all the time. I wanted to ask children, are children up to what age? I really wish know that if you can turn the clock back and become children. Because when children have conflict, when they have the worst of fights, I remember the amount I used to fight with my brother. And Every time I would say the nastiest of things to him and I would even make a grandiose statement, I am not going to talk to you for the rest of my life. Go to hell. And 10 minutes later, when I'm sitting and playing with my cars and trucks, I would realize it's so boring playing alone. And I would quietly go up to him and say, I'm still not talking to you, but come and play with me. That's how children are. But adults. No. So what happens? Tanubriya says when we try to be practical, but the person we are confronting behaves irrationally. Yes, it happened. That is the reason. But then irrationally, rational according to me, or rational according to him. He thinks it is rational. I think it is irrational. So just go through those steps which I just highlighted, Tanubriya. State you of this thing that I am getting a little upset because we are into this confrontation. I feel what you are saying is not rational. Can you now tell me? When the other person is talking, do not interrupt, do not even form an opinion. Listen carefully. Keep asking him, even probe, clarify doubts. Then say, okay, give me some time to think. Maybe take an opinion from a third person. Where he is totally irrational, you have a right to argue with him. Certain areas, he is not very irrational, 
let go. And when you let go, no, the other person feels nice. Okay. In this, I'm not going to argue. I'm going to allow you. But in that, I'm a little more particular. So when you are having conflict and arguments with a close person, what I always recommend is let go of the small issues and focus on the main ones. You read that book, uh, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff or something like that. That is what we uh, need to uh, uh, do. Yes, Satyan, humor and uh, lightening the mood certainly leads to lower conflicts. Every now and then I've seen that some people have that very lovely instinct in them that, you know, they can just laugh over something and get it over uh, with. Surekha is asking, while team building, how can the leader establish harmony in egoistic uh, uh, clashes? Pamper the ego. Ego is a different topic, which I've already covered long back. We'll do it some other time also. But there are ways and means to over, you know, pamper the ego of the person. If you confront uh, uh, him and argue with him or even point out fingers, the worst thing that you can do is to tell an egoistic person that he's egoistic. That's why I keep on reminding conflict can be handled only by sticking to issues and not touching upon personalities. So whether the other person has a bloated ego or not, can I keep it aside and focus on the fact that today I want to resolve this issue with uh, him. The more I keep thinking that ego, he is egoistic, that's why he does this, earlier also he had done that. Even my own, you know, frame of mind is not very compromising or not very forthcoming. Vita says, you mentioned that we should not lose our temper while we have conflict, which I totally agree. But most people lose their pool and also forget the main reason why. Yeah, I'd already mentioned to you that if you are likely to lose your temper, then get away from the situation, calm down, go and wash your face, do whatever. I also recommend the same thing when the other person is losing his temper. Don't point out and say, why are you shouting at me? I don't like this uh, uh, thing. I don't tolerate this. No, don't do that. Now you realize that the other person is losing his temper. Excuse yourself. Just one second, I have to send this important message and then I'll come back to you. Or I'll just go to the washroom and come. I need a glass of water. I'll go to the kitchen and get myself a glass of water. Very small things, but that also come down. In most cases, unless people have a personality disorder and anger management problems and all, most people, within no time, their anger comes down. Then again, start on a positive note. Yeah, as far as that point is concerned, I will give it a serious thought. I think what you are saying, though I don't agree with it, I think there is a point there. Let me discuss about it. Now let us move on to resolving the other thing, right? Anita says, can there be a win-win situation when the other person cannot be convinced? No, that was the last point. If you remember, I ended with that. After all your efforts, if you realize that the other person is so adamant, so stuck up, that the person is just not willing to budge an inch, do not get into argument. Then you'll say, if I don't get into arguments, how do I resolve the conflict? By entering into the argument, also you are not resolving the conflict. On the other hand, you are creating more bitterness. You are making the other person even more adamant. So I would recommend you let go of the argument. Stop you know, discussing it with him and look for alternative ways and means of resolving the issue over which the argument started off. Satyan says, is it better to move away when the tempers are high and then approach again when karma has prevailed? Yes, Satyan, in both cases. If I feel I'm losing my temper also, I should do the same thing. Or even if I am calm and quiet, but the other person seems to be losing his or her temper, I strongly recommend that take time and space. If it is possible and if you have a good equation with the person, say so that I think we are getting very angry with each other. Don't say you are getting angry or you are losing your temper. I think we are getting a little angry and uh, upset with each other. So can we take a uh, uh, break? Can we continue this discussion after lunch or can we sleep over it and discuss it tomorrow morning? Things like that. Okay. Then. Uh, uh, what was the next one? Lilavati. When the other person keeps repeating the same mistake, how to keep uh, uh, cool? That the other person keep repeating the mistake 100 times. You want need to decide. I told you, when the other person points out something negative, first thing to do is to listen patiently. Allow the person to say, even if the person is in a 
angry mood, let that person shout and raise his voice. You just keep listening. After that, clarify. You had said that, you know, I'm spending too much money. Can you give me a few examples? I want to see whether it is true and whether in what areas I'm doing it. So can you do something? Clarify with the other person. And then you come to a situation where you take a call whether you would like to continue with the discussion or what is the methodology. Meena says, how do we handle stubborn people who hang on to their point and refuse to budge? Again, I come back to the last point that I had given. First, you put in all your efforts. You try it out. Use somebody else who this person listens to properly. Use other means of communication. Every time we sit down to talk, we raise voices and we get into arguments. So I'm going to now do it through WhatsApp or through emails or some other means so that we don't start losing our uh, temper. So I will make all those efforts. But finally, as Veena says, if there is a person who is so stubborn that he refuses to budge even partially, if he is you know, budging partially, catch all of that. It was so nice of you that you agreed on this particular point. It may have been a small point, but it was so nice of you that you agreed on this particular point. And because of that, you know, I'm feeling so nice and positive towards uh, you. I think if we continue doing that, we can achieve a lot. That way you're making a breakthrough. But if that doesn't happen, I come back to the last point which I showed you on the slides. Just stop arguing and look for alternatives. Ah, who is the next one? So not says sometimes we end up attached to the conflict and dread resolution. Yes, Sunaj, I want to caution all of you on that. Glad you brought up this uh, uh, point. Sometimes this conflict becomes our comfort zone. Sometimes we want to become victims. See, my father always shouts at me. <coughs> See, my mother-in-law is so unreasonable with uh, me. <coughs> In a certain way, we have actually gone into that comfort zone of wanting to become a victim so that I can gain the sympathy of others. See, this teacher always picks on me only and she keeps scolding me. Have you seen how the boss in every meeting points out only to me and keeps uh, pointing out my uh, mistake? How do you expect me to work if this is the type of behavior of the uh, boss? Now, when that happens, I am actually not looking to resolve the issue. I'm only trying to gain sympathy, which is a very negative thing to do. Because once I get into that trap of self-pity, of taking on the victim's role, I will not empower or strengthen myself to resolve the issues to become more efficient, to handle people better. That is our objective, isn't it? Not just to gain sympathy from others saying, oh, poor fellow, see, he suffers so much from his father, his boss, his mother-in-law, whatever. Those are the type of things that we need to, uh, you know, work on. And that is why we should work on these, uh, uh, you know, uh, issues to whatever extent we can. What is the next uh, question? Okay, till I see the next uh, question, I want to elaborate on something that I told you about, which is conflict positions. If you recollect, I told you that there are five conflict situations which are possible. Whether they are good or bad, we'll come to that later. First one was avoidance, running away from it. Second one was accommodating, that is surrendering and allowing the other person to do what you want. Third was competing, asserting. Saying, no, my thing is right. I will not do this. I will put my way forward. The fourth was compromising. You take half, I take half, those sort of uh, uh, things. And last was collaborating. Let me start with avoidance. Sometimes in a conflict situation, you need to do avoidance. When? If I am in a bad mood. If I'm already, you know, losing my temper over something. If I do not know the total facts of the uh, case, if there is a third person involved whose opinion is very important, but I have not spoken to him and got his views on uh, this yet. So these are the type of uh, situations where it is good to avoid gain time. 
accommodating helps only if it is a short term thing and you say it is not important to me so let the person have his way i will give up how does it make a difference to me and not but one point i'd like to tell you when you are accommodating when you are giving up try to get something back in return say it's okay even though i was arguing with you and i didn't agree with you i will give him okay we'll have your way you do it but in that other issue that we were talking about can you give a serious thought and try to help me with uh, that very often the person is in a more positive and a generous mood when you are accommodating competing i don't know how and when competing helps i am one person who has always been against this concept of competing the rat race achievement trying to do better than the other person but maybe there are times when it helps to have a healthy competition as long as it not does not lead to unpleasantness then of course compromising you have uh, seen that childhood story where these two are fighting over a loaf of bread so the monkey comes and tells the cat that you know i will break up the bread into two halves and you can then uh, you know each one of you can have half when he breaks it up he realizes that one piece is bigger than the other so he breaks a small piece out of that to make it equal and he eats it up but then the other person realizes that no this piece has become bigger than the other one so he says oh, don't worry i will just knock off one small piece from here and make it equal and he eats that up by the time the other person the story goes on repeating till the monkey has eaten the whole loaf of bread why i am telling you this is while this is a children's story but there are a lot of human beings who are ready to you know as they say take advantage of others when there is a conflict taking place emotions are running high people are feeling very exasperated lila has just now said conflict really drains a person remember that even in the end if you win that battle that argument it still leaves you very drained out so knowing that whenever you are trying to you know compete or whatever please remember that there will always be some third person trying to intercede when you are trying to look for a compromise also the same thing happens and like i told you when i mentioned about accommodating whenever you want to compromise and give up something willingly never do it without gaining something and when i say gaining it need not even necessarily be in material terms okay i am handing over this part of it to you even though i don't agree with it i am you know withdrawing my claim and i am handing this over to you now in return i want something it could be something as simple as you know the boss is under the impression that i am not doing my work efficiently now that we have agreed on this can you just come with me for a minute to the boss and can we tell him that boss we have resolved it and you say that no i, I feel that ali is also you know uh, uh, collaborating properly and we are working as a team so that misunderstanding or the misinformation that the boss had about my efficiency that gets clear that's all i want from you so that's not a major issue and when he is in that good mood that you know you have compromised and you have given him something he will be willing to give you so always remember that when you compromise or when you you know give up on something try to get back something in return but as i told you the best way of resolving is what we refer to as collaborating and what they also refer to as win win situations okay uh let me start off with giving you let's say an over simplistic example you're going and attending a meeting somewhere a full day conference or whatever you have one hour lunch break the caterer has been told to provide you know fixed thalis in which all the items puri rice these pickle upper curd everything has been put and a plastic cover has been put on that now the caterer has been told the number of people who are going to be eating let's say they are 60 people so he has brought 60 
plates of meals ready hot fresh one o'clock the uh, conference breaks for the lunch one hour you have got most people go straight to the caterer and pick up their uh, food and walk off with it when you were about to do it your friend comes and says boss i've got a very bad headache not being able to focus on it i checked and they said that the nearest uh, medical shop is 2 kilometers away you have a motorbike can you please take me on the bike otherwise if i walk down 2 kilometers and come back the lunch time will go off in that if we go on the bike within 5 minutes we can go and buy that medicine and come back then we can have lunch so you oblige him you put him on the bike you take him to the medical shop next to the medical shop there is a shop offering 80% discount up to 80% discount and some very interesting things are there so before you know it you have walked into that shop and you are looking for something this is okay but no that fellow said no this one has only 10% discount oh, yes this is how they cheat no no sir we have one with 50% discount why don't you look at it you go half an hour goes off anyway you buy something of interest and you are very happy and you come back when you land back there you see that the caterer thinking that in this half an hour all the people have come and taken their thalis and gone and two thalis are still remaining so you know what he is doing he has opened one of them and is happily finishing off the food and when you walk up he says are you saw me i didn't know you people are going to come i thought everybody is eaten so i will eat none anyway i have one thali left that please adjust my so if i adjust my now what do you do this is what i wanted to tell you avoidance would be okay i won't have my land go ahead you do what you want accommodating will be it's okay you take it maybe i'll have some biscuits or i'll go home and eat i don't know you are more important competing would be it is because you took me to that medical shop otherwise i would have got my food so i deserve that thing you must give it to me immediately the other person turns around and says i took you to the medical shop for 5 minutes you spent half an hour in that sale business and that is why it happened not because of my medicine you are at fault competition starts compromising would be ideal right open the thali get an extra plate you take one puri i take one puri you take half the rice i take half the rice you take half a papad i take half the papad good both of you have got but at the end of it you are still left feeling uncomfortable right i got only half a meal so that is where the final thing comes in can i collaborate if you develop that thinking out of box thinking if you start visualizing and exploring different alternatives you will find something or the other i do it with a lot of people when i do it with very high bro senior management and those type of people they hardly come out with any solution in fact their solutions are more egoistic as one or two of you were pointing at why should i give up my land this very fellow this 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 how can that uh, you know uh, caterer eat of one of the uh, things i will complain about him they get into unwanted things but when i talk to youngsters when i talk to students they have such vivid imagination and they come out with such wonderful solutions one of them says i have a bike i can even now go quickly to the darshani have a plate meal there and come back but why should i go and pay for my plate meal so the other person says it's okay boss i'll give you 50 bucks cost of the meal go and eat and come back i will eat this so both of us now have a full meal only thing is this fellow had to pay 50 bucks but anyway he, he got a right to get that uh, tablet and now he can focus on the conference much better so he doesn't mind the just after all 50 rupees to my friend who helped me to get the medicine so he doesn't feel bad about it and both of us get up or the other person says can i borrow your bike my cousin lives down the road little far away i'll go quickly and i know that she will cook something or the other at this time they will have some food i'll eat nice homemade food and come back you eat the thali 
You're getting my point. There are always ways and means if you start exploring. Both of them can tell the caterer it's your responsibility. You have to get another uh, uh, plate, whatever time it takes. One says, I want to be back in the conference at 2 o'clock, so I will eat now. The other says, anyway, when I'm at home, I eat only by 2 or 3 o'clock. So I'm not very hungry. So you tell the caterer the moment that extra plate comes, you have to arrange for it. It's your responsibility, right? He cannot say no. But he will only say it will take one hour more. Doesn't matter. Whenever it comes, you call me. I'll take a break. Come eat and go back. Now you are getting the point. If you have that attitude, number one, stop blaming the other person. It is because you took me to the medical shop. No, it is because you spent half an hour in that garment sale. It is your fault, my fault, our fault, this fellow's fault. Look at this caterer, what he is doing. How dare he take away our food? Whether we eat or not, that is our thing. He should not have opened that uh, thing. Endless, right? And that is what leads to one conflict after another. And you get into that habit. You start having conflict with somebody. If you are in that mood and you shout at that caterer, after some time, some other person is saying something, a serious conference is going on, you lose your temper because you already lost your temper. You are still simmering with that uh, you know, anger inside you. You take it out on somebody in the conference and that goes very strongly against you. They say, what's wrong with this guy? Look at the way he's behaving in this and it becomes a black mark on uh, you. So all these things we need to look uh, uh, into. Yes, Lakshmi, even that option is excellent. That more better would have been to inform the caterer. So your, you know, out of box thinking should go to that extent where you say, even if you are going to come back in a few minutes, let me tell the caterer, please keep two thalis for us. We are coming back in a few minutes. Simple, isn't it? It didn't strike me. But the more you use your imagination, the more you start exploring, and the more you have what we call as a proactive attitude. I want things to be resolved. Finally, what are we talking about? We are talking about filling our stomach. We are hungry. We are sitting here in the whole day in the conference. So obviously, we need a good meal. That's the issue, isn't it? How you can do it? There are innumerable options and alternatives. But you have to develop that attitude. A lot of conflict takes place because of people whose attitude remains stuck. Whether it is ego, whether it is just things. Many of you have mentioned that obstinate uh, people. Other people we cannot change, but at least we can change ourselves. And we can definitely try to change those who are close to it. Be it office colleagues, be it people at home, be it anybody. We can make those efforts if we want to. Uh, do it. So that is why I started off today by telling you list out the people with whom you have conflicts. It could also be situations where you have conflicts. Whenever we have a sales meeting, things get uncomfortable and people start shouting at each other, and I also realize it. When we have a finance meeting or HR meeting or review meeting, things go very fine. It's only in this sales that. Uh, it happens. And as Sunita has very well put up, conflict is inevitable, but combat is optional. It is not necessary that I should get into a combat. I should accept that conflict as part of life. My focus will not be on putting the blame or trying to do one upmanship, but it should be on trying to get a good resolution to whatever the issue is. As long as I keep focusing on that, I can do wonders. So with that, I leave it to you how you will practice, what you will do. And of course, uh, my colleagues have already told you we offer free counseling. Don't even use the word counseling. Maybe, you know, conflict resolution, some uh, things which I'm not very happy with the way life is going. You can always get back to us, have an informal chat with us. Seema keeps on reminding you, okay, just come over and spend some time with us. If you're not you know, coming over, you're not in the same city, call us up, send us an email. We are there. Let's all try to build a little bit of a better environment and a more harmonious 
environment around us. That's all on that. Thank you and bye-bye.